If you watched my video about the time that Terrence Howard's father killed a man at Christmas time, then you likely saw this part of it. In 2005, according to Eater Philadelphia, Terrence Howard attacked a couple at Ray's Dining Car, which was later called Ray's Restaurant and Malt Shop, and is now closed. This information surfaced in 2013 after being suppressed by Terrence Howard's legal team for eight years. Reportedly, Terrence physically assaulted Danielle DiStefano, yes, a woman, and Kevin Saffel over something that didn't seem like that big of a deal. The hostess started seating Danielle and Kevin. Apparently, Terrence Howard was there first or thought that he should have been seated first. So, he proceeded to cuss out Danielle. Kevin demanded an apology from Terrence and instead received a punch in the face from Terrence Howard. After Kevin hit the floor, Terrence then punched Danielle in her chest. Then he ran away from the scene of the crime. Police apprehended him close to the restaurant. Now, that does seem to be one of the rare occasions when Terrence Howard put his hands on a man. But there are five other instances on record in which he got physical with women. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear who make Ty's Hot Mess History a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. In this video, We'll just do a chronological timeline of the times that Terrence Howard was accused of being violent towards women. But don't worry, he had a reason for it each time, and it was never his fault. Just a bunch of coincidences. You know how that goes. And just so you know, for the most part, I am just displaying random photos of Terrence and his partners. So it could be that the story that you hear me discussing isn't necessarily about the woman on the screen at that moment. Let's just say that Terrence appears to have a type and several sources have clearly mislabeled some of the partners because they look so similar. And just for the record, none of them look like any of you black women who are going to be windmilling for Terrence Howard in my comment section telling me that I'm just trying to take down a good black man. So, here we go. 2000. In August of 2000, Terrence was arrested in Cleveland, Ohio after assaulting a Continental Airlines flight attendant on a flight from Toronto to Cleveland. Why would he do such a thing? Apparently, because she got out of her place and told him to return to his seat while his seatbelt sign was on. According to a police lieutenant, he grabbed her wrists and yelled at her to get out of his way. When the plane landed, he was charged with assault, arrested, and had to spend the night in jail. This is his mugshot from that incident. Here is how Terrence described that day when he, along with his fellow cast members from the movie Crash, went on The Oprah Winfrey Show to promote the film. He said, quote, This woman comes and stands in front of me, the flight attendant. This is before 9-11 before all the fear about what's going to happen if somebody doesn't listen to a flight attendant. She's like, you need to take your seat, sir. I was like, no, I am. I've just got to take my daughter to the bathroom. And she said, you need to take your seat and have your seat buckled. And I said, I understand that, but I've got to take my little girl to the bathroom. Sit down. Now, I'm a 29 year old black man at this time. I'm no little baby. But this woman, you know, she said, when she said that to me, I realized I have no place left to go. So I turn around and I sit back down. And then she looked over at me and said, and put your seatbelt on, end quote. Just for the sake of speeding up his long drawn out story, I'll paraphrase for a bit. The pilot came out to check on the situation and Terrence told him that he needed to take his daughter to the restroom. Then she ended up peeing on herself. Quote, while I'm standing here talking to him, my daughter proceeds to, you know, pee on herself and me. So what I'm defending is my daughter's, you know, dignity. Come off the plane, there's five marshals there that took me to jail because she said I grabbed her and shook her. You know, 
And yeah, I could say that she said, you know, the N word, you know, when she was talking to me, but I have no proof of that beyond me standing there and hearing her say, now sit in your seat, you, and you see her stop for a moment, end quote. Perhaps it happened just like Taryn said it happened. I'm just going to say, I doubt it. On that same episode of Oprah, he also told her the story of the day that his father killed a man while standing in line to see Santa with both their families present. Terrence said that the white man his father killed stood eight inches taller than his father and had used the word nigger when talking to his father. Terrence Howard's father, Tyrone Howard, saw his son on Oprah and said that Terrence lied about the incident. The man he killed was the same height as him, and he never used the N-word during their altercation. For the record, Tyrone Howard was charged with second-degree murder, but the jury found that he was defending himself, so his charge was reduced to manslaughter. He served 11 months. According to him, that horrible incident was just a case of two grown men acting like fools, nothing racial at all. He said that Oprah just wanted a sob story for her show, so his son, Terrence Howard, put his acting chops and race baiting skills to use and gave Oprah the show that she wanted. And I'm bringing up all of that to say that because of his dad's story, I doubt that the flight attendant called him the N-word. Anyway, his defense for grabbing her wrists, he was just trying to take his daughter to the restroom and then defend her honor. The outcome? The charges were dropped by the Cleveland District Attorney, not for lack of evidence, but for lack of jurisdiction. Because the incident occurred somewhere in the skies, not on the ground in Cleveland. 2001. Then, less than a year after the incident with the flight attendant, Terrence Howard was arrested in White Marsh, Pennsylvania for assaulting his estranged wife, Lori McComas. After they had an argument over the phone, he drove to her house, kicked down her front door, and punched her three times in the face. His defense, quote, I broke down the door and hit my wife, end quote. Oh, that's not a defense at all. That's an admission. In a September 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, Terrence admitted to hitting his wife, saying, quote, she was talking to me real strong and I lost my mind and slapped her in front of the kids." End quote. There you have it, ladies. Don't you be out there sassing those men folk. The outcome? He was charged with simple assault, terroristic threats, harassment, and stalking. In 2002, he pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct for the incident. I don't, I don't appreciate you putting my business in the street like this. Well, that's the way it is. Damn right that's the way it is, Rio Perlman. 2005. That was a story that I mentioned at the top of this video, the one in which Terrence assaulted the two complete strangers who were seated at a restaurant before he was. His defense? Terrence told the arresting officer that he hit Kevin and Danielle in self-defense. The outcome? For that crime, he was arrested and charged with simple assault and harassment. Then those charges were later withdrawn, and he received charges for disorderly conduct. 2010 and 2011. Terrence Howard married his second wife on January 20th, 2010. Her name is Michelle Gint. According to her, less than a week into the marriage, he punched her in the face. Then, instead of celebrating their first anniversary, the following January, in January 2011, Michelle filed for divorce, and her divorce papers tell the story of a year of horror. In addition to getting slugged in the face on week one, there is an account of her being beaten and nearly thrown off of a balcony in South Africa that July. And the week prior to her filing for divorce, he threatened her with a butcher knife. His defense? Michelle was the one who was violent towards him. The outcome? The judge granted Michelle Gint a restraining order in December of 2011. 2012. Terrence Howard had a woman in his life who went back and forth playing the role of girlfriend at some times and mistress at others. Her name is Mei Sang Yang, and on May 6, 2012, 
She alleged that Terrence attacked her at his home, while his then current girlfriend, Erica Giles, watched it all go down. So I guess that was one of the times that May was in the role of mistress. Yang told the White Marsh Police Department that Terrence choked her, threw her to the ground, punched her in the eye, then told his girlfriend, fuck this, I'm going to jail for this tonight. According to Yang's handwritten statement to the White Marsh Police Department, she was having an argument with Terrence and she told Terrence Howard that he had given her herpes. She claimed that in response, he acknowledged that he had given her herpes. His defense? She assaulted him also. The outcome? Terrence filed charges against Yang for punching him during their fight. Then both parties dropped criminal charges. However, the matter was settled in a private civil suit. 2013. Michelle Gint, Terrence Howard's second wife from the 2010 and 2011 incidents, decided that she would take another chance at reconciliation with Terrence. That ended up being a bad idea. The couple took a trip to Costa Rica in August of 2013. Michelle alleges that on that trip, after she told him that getting back together with him was not going to work out, Terrence sucker punched her in the face and choked her. Hmm. I wonder why she didn't think that things could work out for them. She alleged that she had to pepper spray him as a means of self-defense. Michelle also claimed that Terrence broke her computer in a horrible altercation. Two weeks before their divorce was finalized, she claimed that Terrence threatened a murder-suicide with an X-Acto blade. Michelle said that that particular meltdown came after she confronted Terrence over half a dozen phone numbers for women and a 17-year-old girl she found in one of his bags. His defense, as he told it to Nancy O'Dell from Entertainment Tonight, quote, We're divorced now, and she should stay that way, and I just wish the best for her. But as far as me harming somebody, anybody that knows me, I really can't harm a fly, you know? It's completely against my spirit. End quote. He was likely telling the truth about not harming flies. They were probably just too fast for him to catch. But Michelle wasn't a fly. She was a woman. The outcome? The judge on the case granted Michelle Gint another restraining order. And both Terrence and Michelle parted ways. Terrence did feel as though Michelle just wanted to expose him and end his career. So there did appear to be some back and forth between the two of them. But what I did not find were photos of Terrence appearing to be injured by her, the way that she had been injured by him. And that is Michelle with the black eye. Those are the accounts on record. Now, I know that there will be some chick in the comment section all angry at me instead of this guy and his anger issues. There are gonna be some brothers telling me that I'm just trying to bring another black man down. And to those guys and gals, I just have one thing to say. You're simple, like the type of assault that Terrence Howard was charged with when he punched his wife in the face. Do you know who else had a history of putting his hands on women? Al Green. A lot more happened that night that the lady threw the boiling grits on him. I published a video about that story that you can see here. I will also leave a link to it in the description box. My sources for this video are Gawker.com, PhillyMag.com, Barstool Sports, which used as its source Rolling Stone 2015, NewYorkDailyNews.com, and KDaney93 on TikTok. And a special thank you to Rich from the House of Jazz channel here on YouTube for recommending that movie clip. What a coincidence for you to see that after I told you that I was working on this video. If you are learning to play the piano or you just want a fun place to hang out on Saturday nights to listen to good music and play music trivia, check out his channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way.
Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn, and in it, she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022. Because let's face it, social media is a moving target, and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging. If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at Taiwan at Tai said what Tai said dot com to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Tai said what Tai said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going and share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that thanks button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.